Right. We're uh, just a little over 45 minutes away from the closing bell. The Dow Jones Industrials up more than 200 points. But early on in earnings season, we have seen some pleasant surprises, such as Intel. And then if you could call it pleasant, J.P. Morgan losing 50 percent year over year, but nevertheless better than expected. But then we've had the disappointments, David, such as General Electric. Yeah, and General Electric hasn't had a rebound since it got killed on Friday. Should we be feeling good or bad about what's ahead? Our Fox panel is back to talk about it, including Peter Schiff. He is author of Crash Proof. Biz Radio Network host Mike Norman, Jordan Netburn from Axiom Capital Management, and Euron Brook from the Ayn Rand Institute. Mike, first to you, because the market is popping. It's up over 200 points today. Is this unbridled enthusiasm warranted? I mean, we did have bad earnings from <laughs> J.P. Morgan, but, but and yet it, it popped. It was, they were earnings, okay? They still made money. That's what's important. And this is really the story of the U.S. economy. Look, we've had problems in the financial sector, and even some of the firms within the financial sector you're giving back some of the earnings that they've made over years. They're still pulling earnings in. The rest of the, uh, uh, a lot of these businesses that have large exposure to overseas, you know, are doing very, very well. Look, you mentioned GE. It's a ridiculous overreaction by investors and the media. You have a $200 billion corporation that comes in with profits $100 million less than what was the forecast. Come on. Well, look, Colin, 19 percent <laughs> rise in profits and they beat expectations. And then again, you, you have Intel predicting a 56 percent gross margin for 2Q. Do you like what you've been seeing lately or are you not doing the happy dance like Mike is about these numbers? Well, I think it depends on what day of the week you're looking. Fortunately, what a difference a few days makes. I mean, you're looking last week, G kind of totally ruined the party. Today you've got Intel, you've got Coke. You've got J.P. Morgan. I think there's a sense of relief, especially after the last year that we've had with the uncertainty of the whole credit issue. And whereas we're still making our way through the credit crisis, companies willing to actually come out and, albeit lowered estimates, hit them, beat them, and clean up their books, so yeah. to speak. So this mm. predictability and this visibility is much more encouraging on a day like today. Peter Schiff. <laughs> Encouragement is not a word that we associate with your analysis of the <laughs> well, stock market. Look, it's, However, with well, if, in general. It's, look, it's hard to be encouraged if you're investing in the United States on the day the dollar today hits a new record low. Yeah, the against gold, the euro. Gold, well, well, against the, the euro. Well, the okay? euro is up about 160. One currency. Look at the oil is, what, $115 a barrel right now? So, <laughs> sure. Like, our companies are earning more dollars. Big deal. The dollars they're earning are less valuable. In real purchasing power terms, American companies are earning less purchasing power now no, than they did before, and the, their the shareholders are worse are off. The profits they're are growing. The profits. Profits. They're not phony. Come on. You're, you're entitled to your own opinion. You're not entitled Those to your own facts. facts. Okay? Hey, guys, there are the other facts. folks here. Liz, Yoran, why don't you direct it elsewhere? I'd Go love, ahead. I would love to hear Yoran's opinion on this. Yes, we did see a ridiculously weak. Don't go to Europe, anybody. A buck fifty-nine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to buy you one single euro, but bringing it back to the United States, um, y you do have some positive outlooks for certain areas. Uh, there are companies that are making money right now. Yeah, sure, but bringing it back to the United States, PPI yesterday was 1.2 percent for, for last month. We've got real inflationary pressures in this country. That's why the dollar is down. That's why uh, oil is so high. And look, Yes, there's some good news out there, and overall this economy is far more resilient than I think many of us expected it would be. Uh, but there's still a lot of bad news out there. There's still some banks that are going to report earnings later this week, uh, early next week. There's National City in, uh, in Ohio that nobody wants to touch, nobody wants to buy. Uh, you know, you could see the largest commercial bank go bankrupt in, the, in American history. Uh, they, they can't find capital. So there's still bad news out there. Let's there not get too, bad news too excited. 2002, you're on. That was a terrible time to be selling stocks. There was a lot of bad news in 1980. That was also a terrible true. time to be selling Times stocks. So, I mean, true. There was bad news in 76, and it was a bad time to buy stocks, Mike. Okay, news. guys. Well, we, we are reporting good news, and we're pleased to report good news. Let's get a check in the market. Dow Jones Industrial Average is up 218, and the NASDAQ is up 2.7. We're going to talk about wow. the NASDAQ in a moment, but Tracy Burns is live. Was it the Coca-Cola fizz from a positive earnings report that has uh, sparked this market, David? It's either that or J.P. Morgan 
or perhaps Intel from after the bell yesterday. And now we're waiting on IBM and eBay coming out moments after the bell. We will get that to people the second those numbers are out. And, of course, our Fox Business panel before then is ready to talk about it, David. They are indeed. Just imagine if those two, two stocks break out above the estimates. I know. Who knows what's going to happen tomorrow? But, again, the question is whether it's about specific stocks or whether maybe the market's ready to burst through some of those uh, trading barriers that it's encountered so many times in the past. Let's throw it to our panel. Jordan, first to you, we had heard Teddy suggest that maybe... Part of the reason is the market feels boxed in by some of these layers that it can't seem to bounce ahead of, and it's close to doing that right now. Yeah, there's no question we've been locked in the trading range for some time, and we've seen a lot of rallies over the last year uh, that unfortunately have aborted. But more and more good news, the most important thing is not only that it's good news, but that the reactions are favorable like we're seeing today. We're in this multi-week period earnings-wise now, and that'll kind of be the microcosm. And if we can get some more results like we see that are matching today, we get a little less anxiety like we saw last week with GE, more confidence. We'll see more money flow into the markets, and it'll bolster uh, the action. Maybe we can take out the upper end of that trading range. Gary Kaminsky, you guys at Newberger Berman are famous for being very careful about the investments you make. You've been very successful in not jumping on the latest and greatest trends. But what did you see today with the markets, as I ask you to kind of narrow your time horizon, just looking at a day like today, that makes you feel a little bit better about the next couple of months? Liz, I think Gary's oh, been sorry. taken out of the mix. Go oh. ahead. <laughs> Peter, well, try that. <laughs> he looks like Gary. He looks like Gary. I didn't even listen to the question, but I know what I, I was going to talk about. You're going to say the same look, thing anyway, regardless. Well, well, look, so let back. him say it, for <laughs> goodness <laughs> sakes. Go ahead, Someone's Peter. got to introduce some reality into the rally. You know, Mike mentioned it's just the euro. The Canadian dollar's up more than 2% today. Maloney. That wipes yeah. out our entire rally. I mean, look <laughs> what's happening in the gold well, stocks. How does I mean, it wipe out the because, entire rally? Because the Dow What kind is, of calculus do you use? Mike, it's, it, it's the Dow. Mike, dollars in dollars. Denominated the, in dollars. The Dow is measured in dollars. It's not 12,000 potato chips. It's dollars. And if the dollar is losing value, you can't separate that from stocks. And if you price the Dow in Canadian dollars, it's not even up today. Companies it's down. Are, companies are growing profits faster than a decline in the currency. No, they're that's not. Why, Hold on. The, Let him look, speak. That's why wealth is increasing. That's why corporations still have a lot of money. That's why household net worth in this country continues to rise. You have to understand it's, that. And also, let me just if say, household net the, worth dollar is, the dollar depreciation has been a benefit to many companies. No, it hasn't. Good. Peter, here you go again. That is, that is opinion. It is not no, it's The fact. fact is that these companies, many of these companies that we heard report earnings today, talked about their global exposure and the way that has been a, a, a benefit to them in that it has boosted their bottom line. They're earning it's, more as a result of this Mike, whole let Liz global. get a word in edgewise. Go ahead, Liz. Two words, coca and cola. Okay, I mean, didn't they have positive numbers because of a weaker dollar that their, their but businesses again, are doing better? Sure, if the days? dollar loses 90% of its value, sure, a lot of companies are going to earn more dollars, but big deal. The bottom line is, what is the purchasing power that those earnings allow you to deliver to your shareholders? And, if and the most of the economy is not an export it's, economy. It's, it's Hold on, let Euron get in. We haven't heard from him. Go yeah, ahead, Euron. You know, most of our economy is not an export economy. Most of our economy is dealing here w with one what? another. And clearly, there's That's some real on. issues. And we need, we need to look at these fundamentals. Uh, one day, how many times over the last six months has the market gone up 200 or more points? We have to be really cautious about projecting now from this one movement uh, uh, to, a, to a bull market. It, it might. I hope it is. I, we're I hope this is the movement Mike's been calling for months. Okay. Uh, you know, I hope he's finally I, I, right. I think we're somewhere in between. I, you know, I agree with a lot of points being made here. But the dollar, you know, will hopefully not fall into perpetuity. These are cyclical type moves, and at some point, the dollar's got to get some traction here. So what you're seeing, and this is what Liz pointed out before, out of these multinationals like Coca-Cola, is they're being cushioned, they're being, uh, they're benefiting from the fact that they do have revenues overseas, and we can make it through as long as the dollar does get some traction here. And the fact is, like, we're having a good day. Let's enjoy it a little bit. We're seeing some good results. Let's get <laughs> some of the bad out of the way. Well, you know, what a concept, say, Mike. a little broader today. Let's at least enjoy some Go ahead, of the advance. Yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, I, I think that that's, that's true. It's uh, when, it, when you get handed a gift like this on a day like this. But that, I'm just wondering, Mike, if I could play sort of to Peter's side, is that a trick for the average investor? Not the trader, not the sophisticate like you guys, but the average person out there who's thinking, well, maybe I could dip my toe in here at this point. 
What do you mean? Is that a trick for? If, what is what a trick for? Or the, is there worse to come? You know, Liz. Today, Bloomberg uh, came out with a survey. They they polled uh, most of their major clients in five continents. It showed improving sentiment. I have to say, looking at something like that, and also looking at the behavior of the markets, when you see. For example, uh, uh, earnings that are, are not up to snuff, but yet the market still trades higher. I think we're starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. And Liz, if you're saying it's time to dip your toe in, I think you're absolutely right. I think this whole thing is going to be resolved to the upside very soon. If you're investing, one you thing we should mention, by the way, this is a broad rally, very broad, not only in yeah. terms of the uh, within individual indexes, but all the indices. And Peter, the Russell 2000, the small and mid-sized cap. This isn't just a flight to quality. That's up the greatest of all the indices, over 3% today. Well, as I pointed out, the gold stocks are up over 5% today. How can this be a real bull market if the best performing sector is gold? I mean, this, yes, who, you, which, you which had, stocks you, you can, can have, have a bubble and, 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 and real <laughs> increases at the hey, same time. Hey, railroad stocks, very economically what, sensitive, what up uh, five, Final word to Jordan. Today. Go ahead, Jordan. I think the point is we've got a broad advance here, broad participation. That's healthy for the overall market. Last word to Jordan. Thank you, guys. Well, the market feels very happy about what happened today on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. That is up 245 points. And as I mentioned, that is the smallest increase of all of the indices. So, Liz, the trading day has come to a close, but the business day continues. And here's some financial news you need to know. From